in a now viral TikTok, actor James Vanderbeek, who you might remember for Dawson's Creek. He was Dawson in the 1998 hit TV show. Man, I feel old, but I'm going to keep reading. <laughs> well, he tore into the Democratic National Committee for refusing to hold a debate between Democratic nominees and President Joe Biden. Here's part of what he said. I am, cannot get over the fact that the Democratic National Committee is saying there will not be a debate to decide the nominee for president. Are you kidding me? Over an 80 year old man who if he lives will be the oldest sitting president in the history of the country. And if he doesn't live, has a vice president whose approval rating is worse than his? This guy is obviously declining mental faculties. You're putting him up in front of a podium with flashcards telling him who to call on and what the questions are gonna be. And you're telling us there's no debate? What about the will of the people? Well, shortly after Biden kicked off his reelection bid in April, the DNC did in fact announce it would not be holding a debate in the primaries, and it has thrown its entire weight behind the president. James Vanderbeek, un tapping unusual into something uh, you believe. Hero, and, uh, I believe, yeah. yeah. Look, and he's a Democrat. We found out he is a Democrat. He's a Democrat. So I found a, not... I found a post from 2016 where he went on Facebook and said, "I normally don't get political, but I gotta say, I know there's a lot of reasons people are gonna say Hillary is worse. I'm sure many of you are opposed to. I'm not thrilled about her either, but." You know, we got to vote against Trump is yeah. is the idea. And he posted an article about some recent scandal that had happened about Donald Trump. So I, I all despite seeming to align himself with Democratic politics historically, people are very Democrats are very mad at this. The Daily Beast characterized this story as uh, why James Vanderbeek has become Fox News's hero, as Jesus though Christ. that invalidates Sorry. the substance of what he said. Yeah, it's, it's absurd. What, That's crazy. Over 70% of Americans think that Joe Biden shouldn't run, right? And the Democratic Party is going to really have to reckon with the fact that it is literally setting up the same situation that they had in 2016, where you had two unfavorable candidates going head to head, and you're hoping that Democrats feel more peer pressure to come out and vote for Biden just because than Republicans feel genuine enthusiasm in coming out and voting for someone like Donald Trump. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's expressing something that it just viscerally people understand and feel, which is that, of course, there should be a debate. And it, this will not weaken, this will not hurt Joe Biden. This will strengthen him. Actually, this is a point that got made recently in, a, in a, what, what Mehdi Hassan had on Marianne Williamson and, and you know, grilled her, called her a spoiler candidate. Spoiler she said, candidate. I'm not even, I'm, I'm not spoiling anything. I'm running in the primaries. Yeah. So what do you say to those who point out that, yes, you are popular with younger voters and on TikTok, but you can't win a Democratic presidential primary. You're essentially a spoiler candidate. And so by primarying Biden, all you're doing is weakening him in the general and making it easier for a Republican to beat him in 2024 in what will be a very tight election. Well, there are two things about what you said. First of all, you said I'm a spoiler candidate. I'm not a spoiler candidate. I'm running in a primary. So you can't be a spoiler if you're running in the primary. The second thing you said was this narrative you can't win. Isn't that what people said about Donald Trump? I will win if people vote for me. So that harangue, I mean, look, the choice to frame so much of that interview as asking a candidate why she was justified to run. And that also that pivot where he says, well, are you even qualified to run as though one, Donald Trump didn't happen, and Marianne made that point. But also that somehow being a lawyer or having spent so much time in Congress causing some of the problems that we need a president mm -hmm. to unwind qualifies you for that very job, I think really flies in the face of what so many Americans have come to believe, which is that D.C. culture, the swamp, the captured nature of our political system is exactly the problem. And thank goodness, frankly, that we have social media and, frankly, celebrities with platforms who are able to say out loud what majorities of Americans are thinking but very few pundits are willing to say. Right. Absolutely. This is for a long time. The right has said um, that we need people who are not career politicians. And then fi finally, they got offered one and he won Donald Trump. Yeah. And I think many uh, people on the left as well intuitively understand that 
people who have been in Washington forever are not serving the people's interests. They're serving lobbyist interests. They're serving um, corporate influence interests. They're they're serving the state itself. They're serving the interests of the federal bureaucracy, which sure. has grown well beyond the control of either party. Um, and, and again, we're not talking about like overturning the system here. We're talking about having a debate between Joe Biden and the two people running against him, who are po who have a combined polling what in the in the 20s that they're close to 20 at oh, this point. More than that, um, RFK Jr alone was polling at 19, 20 yeah. percent. Marianne Williamson in some polls yeah. was at 9 percent. And then in a different poll, they were both polling at 11 percent. So right. that's probably the This will not 20%. hurt Joe Biden. And if it hurts Joe Biden, maybe I mean, that shows that he's not a good candidate. <laughs> that's, that's the double-sidedness of it. Joe Biden can't this, simultaneously so claim yeah. right, that these people are so small that he shouldn't have to debate them, but also that debating them would make him so vulnerable that he can't win. Which is it? Do they have enough energy to actually cause you to lose the primary? Primary. Or is it the case that maybe they will say things to you about your record, about your failure to follow through on your promises to the American mm -hmm. people that make you look bad? If that's the case, now is the time to cure those problems. But Hillary Clinton never took seriously the concerns and complaints that were made against her, no matter how substantive, no matter how broadly felt. She characterized over and over again her critics as sexist, as out to get her, as bad faith actors, and never felt any need to actually make the necessary pivot from primary to general election to bring more people into the fold. And as a consequence, she left. Someone needs to learn, she lost yeah. rather, sorry. Someone needs to learn from that lesson. But the, the audacity of calling people who point that out, like Fox News's favorite Democrat or, or whatever, who's that, that was the Daily Beast that, was that the did Daily that? Beast. Unsurprising. <laughs> <laughs> totally unsurprising. But yeah, you can't offer, you can't be a Democrat and offer any criticism of the Democratic Party and its and its choices and how it's, where it's moving primaries and debates and things in order to anoint Joe Biden again. If you have any issues with that, uh, you might as well be a Republican. That's the mainstream media line on all this. Yeah, whomst amongst us have not, have not been accused of being a secret Trump supporter just because we said things like, hey, I want a president who doesn't say he's going to veto Medicare for all if it passes the House and Senate. Or, hey, I want a president who's not going to try to memory hole his promise to cancel all student debt for HBCU grads, even though those are the same people who turned out and won Georgia for him back in 2020. Is James Vanderbeek saying, I don't want to wait <laughs> for the 2024 nominating <laughs> season for Democrats to be over? Before I get a primary opportunity. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're having some fun on Rising oh, we'll today. Put the singing. More Rising for you after this.